Hello and welcome to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. So last video, I mainly did Slayer and just some other random stuff. I'm up to 81 Slayer and I managed to get a herb sack, finally. And it's been so useful for doing Slayer. Right now I'm on a cross task and of course I brought my herb sack and it's just really nice. I really recommend getting this like as soon as you're able to, but of course after certain other upgrades, like obviously you should get a Slayer Helm first, but it's just so nice. Plus I can use it for skilling stuff as well, not just Slayer. I believe I used it in Sepulchre on my main, which is great because I'm gonna be doing Sepulchre this video. So yeah, I'm at 82 agility right now, which means that I can only do up to the 4th floor, but that's fine because I still need to practice that a lot. Plus I'm mainly just going for marks first because I want to get like all of the tools from Sepulcher first before I go for Black Graceful or just go for levels. And I will most likely be doing Sepulcher all the way to 99. Like I'll probably do some other agility like like the Artie course or the Prif course in between whenever I just don't feel like doing a Sepulcher but I feel like doing agility or feel like I need to do agility because I really want agility to be my first 99. I really enjoy agility and I think as a first 99 it's really useful because it restores your run faster and gives you access to a lot of shortcuts and the cape is cool and it's kind of a flex to have that as like your first 99 so that's what I'm gonna go for first I need to edit so I'm just gonna keep AFK and Slayer oh wow I got a Karask head on my last kill of the task I guess I kind of wasted my RNG there because they're a one out of 3k drop and I have 466 KC of Karasks. And I have 1 KC of a King Karask, but it's the same drop rate for them. Yeah, nice collection log slot, I guess. At least I can use it for prayer XP by sacrificing it to the Dark Altar and Arceus. But I guess if I really wanted, I could also mount it in my house as decoration. 75 prayer. Just doing a farm run, and since I have 91 when farming now I can plant two spirit trees so I guess my second one is gonna be here in Port Sarim. The reason for this is mainly just because it's like really close to clue scroll steps because there are a lot of different clue scroll steps in Port Sarim. And you know even though there's the Rat Pits minigame teleport that brings you just over here, you can only do that every 30 minutes and then you have like the Draenor teleport and the Cabbage Patch teleport. But it's nice to have a teleport that's a little bit closer to Port Sarim. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Okay it's finally time to start the Sepulchre grind. As you probably know, I did this on my main last year and just did it long enough to get Black Graceful and all of the tool unlocks. Although I didn't get very good at it because I didn't really do the 4th and 5th floor that much. But I'm starting on this account at 82 agility, which just allows me to be able to do the 4th floor, but hopefully I can get good at that because I feel like the 4th floor is like the main problem for me. It's always like the last obstacle that I always get stuck on. And I'm doing this pretty much to 99. I mean, I'm gonna do like other agility in between, but I think I'm mainly gonna be doing Sepulchre. So hopefully by the end of it, I'm actually good at Sepulchre. Pulker. So I'm currently in resizable because I think that makes it a little bit easier if I just like close these things and then I can see the obstacles from far away a little bit easier. Here's my inventory and gear setup. If you've seen Mudkip's Sepulchre video, then it's like basically the same thing, but I'm still gonna go over it in case anybody hasn't seen that or hasn't seen it in a while because I know his video was posted a while ago. So I'm sorry if this is just like 
repeated content, but... So I'm using the Dorgashan crossbow because I need a crossbow to be able to grapple this certain obstacle, and the Dorgashan crossbow is the lightest crossbow, so it's really useful in Sepulchre. And this is what I'm going to be using the entire time. I'm using a holy symbol as a Ceridomen item so that I can use the thing that restores your prayer at the end of each floor. And to do that, you need some kind of Sarah item. And you also need a Sarah item for the prayer book, which I'll talk about later. And then a myth grapple, just to grapple the thing, obviously. So I'm gonna be replacing these two items at some point, and I'm gonna gain a ring and something in my shield slot. So in my inventory, I have a rune pouch with runes for the highest level enchantment spell that I can do. Oops, I realized I had the wrong runes because the highest level enchantment spell I can do is level 5 because this one is just a few levels above my current magic level. So now I have the runes for the correct one. And this allows you to open the portal to loot the coffin. Then I have nature runes in case I need to alk something. You need a hammer and saw and planks, which I have in my plank sack. So in my plank sack, I have just normal planks and steel nails. I could have sworn someone told me before that higher level planks and nails decrease your chance of failing them, but I talked to Mudkip about it and he says even if that is true, which I can't find it on the wiki so I don't know if it's actually true or if that person who told me that just like didn't know for sure. But yeah, I talked to him and he said that even if it is true, then it's not really worth it to use higher level planks and nails just to like save a few seconds. So I'm just sticking with basic planks and steel nails, which you have to have steel nails to go with the regular planks. And if you use oak planks, you need mithril nails. For teak planks, you need adamantite nails. And for mahogany planks, you need room nails. And I don't want to waste bars making those. Although I might use some of the oak planks because I have some extra oak planks and I have a bunch of mithril nails in my bank. I also have my herb sack because you get a lot of herbs here and my prayer book to use to cure my poison so I don't have to waste antidotes. And I'm not gonna make the same mistake Mudkip did and just click my HP orb whenever I'm poisoned to cure it. If I have sand fuse in my inventory, I'm gonna try my best to remember to manually go into my inventory and click recite prayer. And then I have vampire dust which you need to two each for the obstacle at first until you get the hallowed symbol, the necklace thing that you get here, and that makes it so that whenever you're wearing it you only use one vampire dust instead of two. And Mudkip gave me some of his leftover vampire dust, so I don't have to go collect any right now, but I'll definitely get to that at some point and I'll be sure to show it in the video and explain the process, even though it's really Really simple. And then I just have some emergency food, which I don't think I really need to have food in my inventory, but it's nice to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So there are a couple of rune light plugins I'm using. One is the camera plugin, and I'm going to be using the vertical camera thing so that I can do this so it's like straight down, which makes it a little bit easier navigating through all the obstacles. And the second one is Tile Indicator, which is extremely useful for Sepulcher. and if you're gonna do Sepulcher, I really recommend at least having this. And of course the Agility plugin, which like highlights the things that are flying at you and stuff. And the True Tile thing makes it so that it shows the tile that you're actually on in game. It looks like it's going in front of you, but that's like actually the tile that your character is on. That's what it registers as in the game, pretty much. Oh, and of course the ground markers plugin. I guess when I get into Sepulchre then you'll see that I have a lot of tiles marked. And when I was doing this on my main, I found this Reddit post 
where I could copy the tile markers for Sepulcher and just like download them directly into my rune light and that way I could automatically have all of the tiles that they used and it, it came in really handy. Although I suggest also just making your own because I ended up changing some of them but you might also have kind of a different route that you take. Okay, I'm probably pretty rusty, but let's start Sepulchre. Alright, I have to talk to this guy first. Okay, cool, I have some hallowed crystal shards which teleport me into this lobby, which is really nice. Now I'm actually starting. <laughs> I'm not gonna loot this floor, I'm probably just gonna do 2 through 4 for now because I really want to get marks as fast as possible but, but I feel like it's never really worth looting the first floor. So just the second one, the third, and the fourth. Oh and here I can activate the magical obelisk and that restores my run. Here's the first coffin I can loot. This sacrifices some of my vampire dust. Oh, I almost forgot to mention I'm using the strange old lockpick, one of the ones that Mudkip got, because that's just a little bit better than a normal lockpick in this situation. It kind of decreases your chance of like failing, so it's nice. Oh, there's the Knight of the Owl. And there's also an owl on this floor. Hope I failed the portal frame and now I can't use it, so I can't loot that coffin. I remember when I first did Sepulchre, I struggled on this a lot. Hopefully it won't take nearly as long to get back into it. No, I'm not gonna make it. Oh well. I made it, but I just barely ran out of time. Well, there's my first completion of Sepulchre. I got seven marks from that and some blood runes and some GP. I also have some low level food in my bank and I don't have a lot of crampons, so I'm probably just gonna use this low level food whenever I bank and my HP is a little bit low. Kind of embarrassing that it took me a couple of tries to get to floor 4 but I finally made it and I just know I'm gonna get stuck on the last obstacle like a million times again. But hey, it's decent practice. At least I have time to loot this coffin but I don't think I'll be able to loot the other one because I'm pretty sure it's after the last obstacle. Oh, I got the Knight of the Lion and the downstairs area is where it gets really Really hard. Even this obstacle, which is the first on the last floor, it gets me really freaked up. Okay, I made it through, but I think whenever I get this route, it's not too bad, but that one is my absolute least favorite. Like, even when I've gotten to floor 5, I feel like it's in a way sort of more chill, but this one just always gets me so frustrated. I could never, like, time it right, and it seems like I have to just really get lucky to be able to do it in time because I don't really know like the pathing well enough to know like how to dodge the obstacles that are coming this way while like doing it quickly. <laughs> okay, there's my first floor 4 completion and I didn't see but my last floor 3 completion was a PB. Gonna take a break to get some more supplies. So 
for killing vampires. I guess they're all just like over here west of Burgdy Rot, at least like the fairly low level ones. And I actually looked at a DPS calculator to figure out if a whip or blisterwood flail is better DPS at feral vampires because you know the flail is like good against vampires, but at least with my stats and gear, it's actually slightly better to use a whip instead, so that's what I'm going with. And what I'm using is my Mauritania Legs 3, and I guess I'm just gonna like sit here and kill them and fill up my inventory with vampire ash and then probably just use the berg teleport again because it's unlimited just to bank and then just like bank over here and run back to this agility shortcut and then there's a bunch of vampires here pretty simple okay first trip I don't think I really need to bring food with me because I can just like eat up at the bank in between trips. I have no idea how much vampire dust I should have, so maybe I'll just do this to AFK while I'm editing the video and then I'll go back to Sepulchre whenever I'm done. But first I think I'm gonna go buy some planks. I guess for some reason I didn't cure Rasmir after doing Shades of Morton, so I have to kind of do the Shades of Morton minigame. I'm just like following the quest guide, I don't know if that's right, but it should only take like a couple of minutes anyway. Just remembered sometimes they appear afflicted, but once you talk to them they're fine again, so maybe I didn't need to do this after all, but oh well. Oh yeah, if you already used the permit serum on him. Yeah. Yeah, and same with this guy, he looked afflicted at first and he had it like next to his name, but once I talked to him he was fine again. That's so dumb. I did this for nothing. I mean, at least I can use it on like the villagers around here. Wow, some GP, thanks. And it's doing it again, he looks afflicted, but he's not. <laughs> Got a little bit of loot. Okay, anyways, as I was originally wanting to do, I was just gonna buy planks here and fill them in my plank sack and then just keep buying as many as I can. And I guess I'm just gonna use the Berg teleport to bank and then run back up here and keep doing that until I have as many planks as I think I will need for a while. At least they're only one GP so I don't have to worry so much about money. Just buying nails and it seems like the steel nails are bought out in a lot of worlds but I'm using like the total level worlds and it's sort of working but fortunately it seems like they start out at 3 GP and the price doesn't go up so I can just like buy the entire stock in one world and not have to worry about spending a ton of money. Okay I think that's enough for now. It's kind of weird that I checked not only this sawmill but the one in the woodcutting guild and the one just east of Varrock and all of them had the steel nails bought out until there was like 30 left, every single one of them, except for the total level worlds. I'm using the 1750 total level worlds right now, and it seems like those are the only ones that I have access to that don't have the shops like nearly completely bought out. And I'm wondering why it seems like every group Iron Man in the game is buying steel nails today, unless it's just one of the few shops that group Iron Men share with like other Iron Men or other accounts and it's not like exclusive to group Iron Men. And here's all of the planks I managed to get. I think once I get all of the tools unlocked and get Black Graceful, I probably won't be looting any of the coffins besides the Grand Coffin because I'm mainly doing Sepulchre for agility XP so I'm gonna be doing it as fast as possible and once I have all of the things that I need I won't care about marks. So I probably won't be using up supplies like planks and nails and vampire dust after I get all of those unlocks. But I do want to make sure I have enough for now at least. So hopefully this is enough. 
and I won't need to get more later. Okay, and I'm just gonna go back to killing feral vampires until I have enough vampire dust to last me a while. I think I have just over a hundred right now, and I don't know how much exactly I'll need. Okay, I have 439 vampire dust, so hopefully that's enough for my goals. Well, this video has gone on long enough, and I really need to upload because I haven't in a few days. So I'm just gonna end it here, and the next video I'll get into unlocking all of the tools and stuff that I need. So here are my stats. Here's my character summary tab. By the way, once I get more comfortable with Sepulcher, I'm probably gonna start streaming it. Twitch.tv slash spookdog, by the way. The link is in every video description. Thank you all so much for watching. Remember to do what makes you happy, in-game and in real life. And I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, lovelies.